Hey guys, welcome to another tutorial, and this is in version Unity 2018.2, which is currently in beta, but it will be updated as time goes along. So quite a lot of people have asked me over the time and through the past period is, say we get to somewhere and we walk into a trigger or something like that, and we want to display a message, we'll say, press a button to move to a different scene. Now, it's fairly simple functionality, but it's something that people often struggle with. So we'll go through the basics of doing this today. So what we can do is what we need in just in our scene. All I've got here is a plane, uh, something to act as my door. It doesn't really do anything. It's just there for visuals and an FPS controller, which you can pull in from the standard assets. And if you don't have the standard assets, you can go to the asset store and bring in a first person controller. You want to make sure that this first person controller is tagged as player. And then from there, what we can choose to do is we can go game object 3D objects and we can choose cube and we can create a creek cube and this is going to act as our trigger which is near our door so when we're near our door we'll expect to have a little pop-up and then you know we can do something how whatever we want to do so we can place it there which is just in front of our door we can go to the box collider and set it to is trigger we could get rid of the mesh render if we wanted to we can just untick it just so we don't have to see it or you can remove it with the cog on the right from here we'll right click in the project panel Go create C sharp and we'll create a new C sharp script. We can call it move scene on, on key press, for instance. And then we can open that up. What we could do is write void on trigger stay. And as you can see when I highlight over it, on trigger stay is called once per frame for every collider other that is touched, that is touching the trigger. Now it's similar on trigger enter is done once. So when we enter the trigger, you can do something that be required to do at one time. On trigger exit, when you exit the collider, do something. But on trigger state is almost like an update function and it will be checked all of the time. And if you go on to do a key press, you want to be able to check all the time if you have actually pressed that key as long as you're inside the actual collider itself. So we can press tab and we get private void on trigger state. And in the brackets, we have collider with an uppercase and then other as the actual object that we're going to reference. So then we'll say that if and we'll open the brackets other dot compare tag and most of these will be highlighted by the IntelliSense then we have two more brackets and inside quotes we can specify player which we talked about earlier then we can add two curly brackets below there and write something in here that we want to be able to do when we hit it so we want to be able to make a UI appear and we also want to have our button press for instance so first of all, we can do our button press, which is fairly easy. And then we'll say another if statement, if input dot get key down. And then in brackets, we can have the key code, which is key code. And we'll say maybe dot E. Then what we can do is add two curly brackets below there and say that we want to move to another scene. So to be able to do that, we need to use another collection at the top. So we need to say use unit uh, using a unity engine dot scene management with a semicolon. And it's grayed out because we're not currently using it. But when we start writing in our if statement, when we press E, we'll say that scene manager dot load scene and then we can specify something. We could make a new variable at the top, which is we can have in square back bracket serialized field, which just allows us to make a public, which allows us to make a private variable visible in the inspector. We can say and set this as a string and we can call this new level for instance. And then within these brackets for the load scene, we can say new level and then add a semicolon at the end so all we're doing there is that when we're on in the trigger and we're staying in the trigger and it checks every frame we'll say are we colliding with a player and if we are if that player presses e then we'll move to a new level but we also want to be able to make our ui appear or disappear accordingly so what we want to do is we want to have an, uh, another set of square brackets at the top and we'll create a new private and we'll just have this as game object and we'll call this UI element at the top. And then from there, we'll say that 
we can say that UI element dot set active is true. And then what we can do below here is we can underneath the actual encapsulating bracket for this whole um, method that we created, we can write void on trigger exit and we can it will and we press tab from on trigger exit it'll fill it in for us we'll say again if brackets other dot compare tag and player and then we'll add two curly brackets below we'll say ui element dot set active in brackets false with a semicolon and what this means our ui ui element will disappear when we exit the trigger this time as long as we've got the player that was colliding with it so we'll go back into our scene we'll rename the collider or the trigger to trigger and what i'll do is i will add that script to that trigger there and then we can see that we want the ui element and we want the new level so what we can do to create a basic ui element for this we can go into our hierarchy right click we can go ui and we can just choose text and it will automatically create us a canvas an event system and a text component what we can do is we can make this text component white so we can just about see it in our game view down here i can increase the size if you want you can choose to go into the 2d view up here select the text on this side press f and you will just scale in to that object what we could do is we could just make this a little bit bigger so then when we make this text bigger it goes like so and then we can rename in our text press e to move scene as, as just an example it's not a very nice example because it doesn't look very pretty but we can just centralize this and put it wherever you want we could put it in the top corner just for the sake of this example and we could rename this UI text element to the UI element that we wanted. Then from the trigger, we want to add the UI element into there. So that's all well and good. We can set our UI element to disabled for now because we'll only enable it when we walk into the trigger. We want to be able to move to a new scene. So this one at the current moment is called sample scene. What we'll do is we'll go file, new scene, and then file, save scene as, in scenes, and I will call it level one. So you can see level one is currently open because there's nothing going on in the scene. If we go back to sample scene, we'll go, we can exit our 2D view, click back on our FPS controller and press F and we'll move back down to our um, controller and whatnot. Click on our trigger object and go to the new level and just type in level one as you specified below and what must you must make sure is when you go when you've created a new scene you go file build settings and your build settings you've got um, sample scene as your first you can add level one to that slot above if we choose to press play you can see that when we spawn into the scene nothing happens if we walk into the trigger you can see press e to move scene if we walk away it will go away if we've walked away and we press e nothing happens but if we walk back towards our trigger, press E again, you'll see that we've moved to our other scene. So all it required was a few lines of code just to detect when we're inside a trigger, when we've exited the trigger. And bear in mind that when you're doing it, because this is an on-trigger stay event, that it will keep technically activating this element here all of the time when you're inside the collider. So it's technically not 100% optimized, but something as simple and basic as this it's not quite the be all and end all it wouldn't crash your game or make it particularly slow because the engines and computers can handle a lot of things these days but if you're going to take it uh, to another level you could set a boolean to true or false when you've entered and exited have an update statement that when that's happened you can then press e but this was just a simple way to sort of imagine it without getting too complicated about it so that was it for creating a basic trigger to move to a new scene when you press a button. So thanks very much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Cheers.